Good morning, Scotland. Good morning, social media land. I hope you are well. It is Thursday, the 2nd of June, 2022. I read directly from an interesting article regarding investment into Scotland. Scotland outpaced both Europe and the UK as a whole last year as a destination for foreign investors, according to a new report. The latest Scotland Attractiveness Survey revealed 122 inward investment projects were secured in Scotland in 2021. The 14% increase compared with rises of 1.8% across the UK and 5.4% across Europe indicate that Scotland remains the top UK location outside of London for foreign investors. Investors ranked the availability of skills of the local workforce, the strength of business networks locally, and support from regional economic advisory bodies as the most important criteria. Scotland's record levels of attractiveness underline that our second placed UK ranking for FDA flow is matched and underpinned by our investors' rising perceptions of Scotland. Our findings suggest that the outlook for Scotland's FDI is exceptionally bright. So then, we're not too wee, not too stupid, and not too poor. In fact, perfectly attractive to foreign investment. And that's even before we're independent. If we were in charge of our full economic trade and foreign policy, how can it even be suggested by those in the union propaganda machine that we would not make it as a normal, independent nation. It's just bonkers to consider otherwise. However, Project Fear like to play things down and give us scary news. Like a 3.5 billion deficit in our budget by 2026. The press reported it as Sturgeon will have to go begging to Westminster for it. The opposition parties in Scotland were mocking the Scottish government saying they'd have to raise taxes. Well then, please explain why 90% of the funds raised for Rishi Sunak's windfall tax to help vulnerable people during this Tory-inflicted cost-of-living crisis is being generated in Scotland. That's 90% of £5 billion. Can you see the problem here? Scotland, on one hand, will have a funding deficit of £3.5 billion in a couple of years' time if we remain in the UK. But the UK can take £4.5 billion, that's the 90% of the £5 billion, straight out of Scottish oil and gas today. Yeah, no, that's the foresaid bonkers bit. It is positively mental. But I do feel a bit angry and mangled due to the double standards of this. You know, let's mock Scotland by saying it won't have enough cash and then let's take Scotland's cash from her. Between the investment from international bodies into Scotland being so positive and then knowing that the union accepts that we're a wealthy nation, so much so that it can just siphon off a windfall tax right out of the North Sea oil and gas industry. Can you remind me again why we are too wee and too poor? Yeah, I thought so. You can. Thank you for listening. Goodbye and good luck.